Did you know that people have roots just like trees? Well, they do. And in today's video lesson, I'm going to teach you how to have what we call Tai Chi rooting power. And it all starts with a little tickle. So if you want to learn to be strong like a tree, stick around. Hi everybody, it's David Dorian Ross here and welcome to another episode of Learn Tai Chi at Home. It's day number 50 of 100 Days of Tai Chi, the video series where you can learn the entire 103 movements of the traditional long form of the Yang family. Now this is your first time here and you're a beginner who'd like to learn to do Tai Chi at home. You can get started right now by simply clicking the subscribe button and when the little bell icon pops up, click that as well because then you'll be notified every time there's a new lesson and you'll never miss another episode. Now in today's video lesson, we are starting the third section of the long form with movement number 55, carrying the tiger to the mountain. Now, by the way, if you're new to this series and want to see what the first two sections look like, I'm putting a link up above that you can click on to go see the complete sections. Then after we've done the carry tiger combination, we've got a great viewer question of the day about Tai Chi rooting. So if you're ready, let's go right to the lesson. Now this is very exciting. We are officially halfway through the entire 100 days of Tai Chi series. Today's day number 50. And we begin the third section of the long form with a movement that we've done before. This is carrying the tiger to the mountain, the same movement that started section two. So as always, let's take a look at it one time and then we'll break it down together. Starting from the same position that we started section two from cross hands. Now let's take a look at the footwork. The footwork actually begins in a position where the left toe is turned in so that it faces straight down the lane of travel, straight down the lane. And the right foot begins to step into the corner behind you. Now this is a big 135 degree turn and I'm gonna wait until we do the transition to show you how we get there. But the actual step is a one step forward into a bow step that begins from this sort of really radically turned in foot. Then you're going to turn and step wide and long to create that Tai Chi lunge. Here it is from a slightly different angle. If this was the lane of travel coming straight forward this way, this left toe would be turned as far as you can towards parallel to that lane of travel. And then the right foot steps across into the corner, creating a new bow step. Now from here, from this position, we're going to finish the grass bird's tail sequence by simply shifting back to the back foot, letting the body roll in, then forward to the front foot for a lunge, then one more time back to the back foot, and again forward into the lunge. Now let's take a look at what the hands do in this sequence. We're starting from the crossed hands position. And in this position, remember the right hand is on the outside, the left hand is closest to the body. As you turn the body to, to begin this sequence, to get that left foot cranked all the way in and to get ready to change into that extreme 135 degree angle step, the left hand is actually sliding along the inside of the right forearm. Let me just turn here so you can kind of see that. It just slides along the inside of the forearm as you're turning to the right. Then once it reaches the elbow joint, it actually falls down and arcs out to the side. Right? So it's sliding along the inside, arcing out to the outside. And this arc takes place as the body turns back to the left slightly, which brings the right hand across. 
Now we have the two hands reaching out to the left side. From here, you're going to take that step, and the right hand will skim out over the top of the knee and around. That's just like brushing knee. The left hand melts in, the elbow melts down here and pushes forward until you have basically a brush knee and push position. The next thing that happens is that the right hand slides out past the left hand reaching forward. And now you're in a position where the two hands are both basically palm facing palm towards each other, fingertips extending forward, but offset slightly. In this position, the left hand is um, just behind the wrist here, uh, just the front part of the forearm. Now the next piece is what we call the roll back position. You're going to be shifting the weight to the back foot, turning your waist to the left. I'll get to the waist turn in just a second here. And then the two hands sort of fishtail, fishtail in one direction, fishtail to the left, fishtail back to the right. And as they do so, they separate a little bit more so that by the time you are finished with your fishtail, the left hand is now closer to the elbow joint than it was to the wrist joint. So it's sort of moved back a little bit along the length of the forearm. Right? From that initial position, fishtailing to the left, fishtailing to the right. And then once you have finished, it's the fingertips here of the left hand are in the perfect position to touch the right forearm for the third part, which is the squeeze or press movement. Once you have finished the squeeze or press, then the two hands slide over each other, withdraw into the chest, and then pushing forward, they lift slightly as we said before. They come back in, the body goes forward, the two hands lift. And in the final position, you see this curved ward off arm very nicely right in there. Here's what it looks like all together, just so that you can, just the, just the hands here. From the crossed hands position, sliding all the way around. Now, remember, I'm going to be turning away from you. I'm going to do it at a shallower angle just so that you can see this. But remember that it's actually a big 135 degree turn. All right, very nice. That's what the hands do in this position. Now with a movement like Carry Tiger to the Mountain with so many different pieces of both the hands and the feet, you really could get lost without the linking component, which is the movement of the torso, the waist and hips here. So let's go through how this torso movement works. And to do that, I'm gonna turn sideways here just so that I can see you and face this direction. So the first thing that goes into motion is the waist here. I'm in my cross hands, but then I'm going to turn the waist towards the right and as I do so, all the hands go into motion and this left foot cranks all the way in until it's as close as possible facing right down the lane. Then the waist turns back to the left slightly and that will facilitate both hands going over here to the left side, just ready for that step. The hip opens a lot, enough so that I can step out into that sort of wide 135 degree angle, like if you consider where I started from to where I'm gonna finish up over here. And then it, the waist turns even more to the right so that I rotate into my final bow step position. Now from here, now that I'm in my brush knee and basically brush knee and push position, the rest of the waist turn is on top of a stable position. I'm not gonna change my bow step at all. I'm just going to sit back so shifting my weight to the back foot, waist turns left, that's the fishtail to the left, waist turns back right, whole body comes forward, whole body comes back, and whole body goes forward again. And so that's the movement of the torso, the linking between the hands and the feet. Now the final thing that we wanna see here about this movement is the transition from cross hands into the beginning of this step. And we've kind of been covering this already a little bit with the waist turn, the right foot, or the left foot cranking in, you know, almost 90 degrees, etc. But I really want to point out that there is a distinction between the beginning of the technique, the beginning of the movement, and the transition that precedes it. Specifically, end of cross hands is right here with the feet parallel and about shoulder width apart. The beginning of Carry Tiger to the Mountain is in this position with the left toe now turned 90 degrees down the lane, preparatory to the wide step out into Carry Tiger. So it's just this 
first piece that is the transition. So take a look at this one more time. You finished cross hands here, then you're transitioning to here. This is the beginning posture for carry tiger to the mountain. And that's our transition from the previous movement to the new movement. There you go, carry tiger to the mountain, the first movement in the third section of the long form. Now our viewer question of the day today comes from Lucy T, one of our viewers, I know who you are, <laughs> and who says sometimes in yoga they emphasize the big toe as important in rooting. Does this toe joint also play a part in rooting in Tai Chi? Now to answer this question, I'll need to make sure that I explain about what is the root, what's meant by the root in Tai Chi. Now I know we brought this up in an earlier lesson, but trust me, it never hurts to review the basic concepts and principles in Tai Chi as often as you can. Rooting is a fundamental concept in Tai Chi. It refers to the ability to connect your energy to the energy of the earth. When you're able to do that, it makes you very strong, stable, grounded, difficult to push over, and even able to absorb the energy of an attack so that it actually makes you stronger. Now in Tai Chi, we learn to create an energetic root structure rather than a physical one. We learn to imagine sending our chi energy down into the earth like the roots of a tree. And of course, the deeper they go, the better. And here's the thing, according to Tai Chi theory, there is a specific point on the bottom of the foot where this energy goes both out and in. It's called the Yung Chuan point, which means literally the rushing or bubbling waters point. Now, although it's called a point, the Yongchuan point is actually quite large. It takes up most of the area of your instep on the bottom of the foot. It starts just behind the ball of the foot, and then it takes up about two to three inches in diameter around the rest of the bottom of the sole. Now, the point gets its name because of the way it feels when the chi energy goes through that point. It feels tickling, as if you were sitting your foot over the top of a bubbling or spraying water that was hitting the bottom of your foot and making it sort of tingle and tickle. And when you feel that energy, you know that you are beginning to establish your root. Whenever we practice Tai Chi, we're also practicing increasing the sensitivity to this sensation. Then whenever we need to make ourselves more stable, we turn up the volume on that tickle and send the energy down into the earth, just like the roots of a tree. So as I said at the beginning of the lesson, the secret to Tai Chi rooting all starts with a little tickle. Now here's my question of the day for you. When was the last time that you took off your shoes, sat by the edge of a stream or river, and stuck your foot out to feel the rushing waters and getting that sensation of a tickle? I know it's winter time and the last thing you're thinking of is taking off your shoes over the rushing waters, but that is in fact the way that we begin training ourselves to develop the sensitivity and the imagination. So, Write your answer down in the comment section below. I'd like to find out a little bit about uh, those of you who are taking off your shoes in the summertime. So Lucy, thank you so much for that question. It was a great one. It gave me a chance to talk about some very interesting concepts in Tai Chi. If you've got a question about Tai Chi principles or concepts or about any of the movements, write them down in the comment section below. I promise to answer all the questions in the comment section and then some of them I get the chance to use them in our video lessons. It makes them just really a lot more informative. Now stick around for just a couple more seconds, if you would, because I'm gonna put up the links once again to the first two sections of this form and also a link to the whole series. Even if you've been following this lessons on a daily basis, I'm sure that there's one or two that you'd like to go over again. And so we've come to the end of another lesson. I hope you enjoyed every single minute of it. And if you did, I'd be ever so grateful if you just click the little thumbs up like button. Thank you so much for that. And if after watching today's lesson, you're starting to think to yourself, hmm, maybe I can learn Tai Chi at home, then you can get started right now by clicking the subscribe button because there's a whole lot more lessons where this one came from. And 
finally, last but not least, thank you again for the opportunity to share my Tai Chi with you. I really appreciate that. Have a great evening. Be well, be wise, be wonderful, and I'll see you in tomorrow's lesson.